Well, hi there, it's Sandy Alnock, and today I'm going to be sharing with you a painting in quinacridone rose and Bordeaux. Recently, I was playing with my dot cards, and I tested out a swatch of Bordeaux that I thought would be kind of interesting to play with, so I bought a tube. What I like to do is instead of just trusting a little swatch of something, I want to see it in context. So I've actually been painting with it a bit to see if it has any best friends, things that it does really well, or are there things that it does that like make me want to run screaming for the hills. And I'm in this painting, I'm doing something that I know it can do, which is work really nicely with a color like quinacridone uh, rose and quinacridone pink. I'm using quinacridone rose here. It's a little more light fast than quinacridone pink. The two colors are so close to each other that you really don't need both. And I've taken a photograph from Paint My Photo, which is a site where people upload their pictures so that you can paint from them without having legal worries like you would if you were trying to use things off of Google for your photographic reference. So I started painting after getting the sketch done, just some general outlines of a few of these flowers and painting in with the quinacridone rose first because that was going to be my light color. I put down that color as the, the background. My easel is at about a 45 degree angle. I love painting at an angle because I love watching the paint drip. And for the photograph that I found, I thought this would be really especially nice to have some of these paint runs go off the bottom and top of the painting because the flowers are just kind of across the middle coming from the upper right and then they just kind of fade off and I thought that would be really beautiful to do some spraying. So I love to spray with water and let things run and that sort of thing, especially in this very first wash. And that's because the first wash is generally my lightest colors so the background can be just a really soft mix of these light colors. I wanted some of that dripping to go off the top as well. So there's one other flower that you can just barely see in the photograph, very light one. And I threw some of these pinks in there and just did some spraying as well. But I did that upside down so it would run off the page in the other direction. And that also gave the paint on the rest of the paper a little bit of time to stop running and move the other direction a little bit. And now we'll turn it right, right side up again. And after it was a little bit dry, I started in with the Bordeaux. Now Bordeaux, if you use it just by itself, think about the name Bordeaux. Not sure why I wasn't thinking about it, but it's a wine color. So it's more of a purpley type of color. And it's also a little more dead. Wines don't tend to be very bright, intense colors. If you do get some intensity in that wine color, it's because you've got some light on the glass. But the color of the actual liquid is more of a darker, purplier kind of color. The color that you see on that flower on the right is a little bit of what Bordeaux does when you wash it out to a really soft wash. It's more of a kind of a dim purple than it is a red, which is great for many uses. But for these flowers, I wanted to use it a little bit more in mass tone, which is what this these centers of these flowers are. And that was the color that I was excited about when I first played with the swatch because mass tone is what I was using for my swatching at that moment. And yeah, that is one of those things that you need to be aware of that it does different things in mass tone, meaning there's hardly any water versus when you have a lot of water in, in the, the mix with it. But I was enjoying what it did when it was on top of all of this quinacridone rose because since they're transparent paints, you can see some of that pink come through it and it actually seems to brighten up the purple a little bit more. So it doesn't end up as dull when it's mixed with the quinacridone rose or quinacridone pink if you decide to use that. I did discover that this looks like poop on a stick with any of the warm reds. So don't expect that just because it works with quinacridone rose that it's going to work well with other colors. It does not play nicely at all with, with those warmer types of colors. You can make it work and there is a project that I'll show you at the end of this that you can go see where I did use it with some warms, but yeah. 
just be aware of that. So I'm continuing with going back and forth between adding the Bordeaux and the Quinacridone rose into my flowers. Anytime I thought I was adding too much of the purple so that they would dull out, I would start adding in just a little bit of the Quinacridone rose to brighten it up. I also want to apologize for the weird lighting things. I know some is getting darker and lighter and darker and lighter because my hand keeps going in and out. Setting up the camera and the lights around my easel has been a challenge. I'm going to try to solve that and find better ways to do it because I do want to do more advanced watercolor classes. So a class on something like this where I could take you through step by step, but I want to film that on my easel and until I solve the lighting problems and the filming problems and stuff, I'm going to uh, refrain from doing those kind of classes, but hopefully that will be soon because the more I test with things like this, the better off that process is going to be and the sooner I will learn how to do that. So I turned the paper around to start working on that flower up on the top and add just a little bit of detail and look at how beautiful the spray does with the color. I just love when it does that. When you spray something and it just moves the color in ways that you didn't expect and it might lose an edge of a flower, but I just love it. I think it's gorgeous. So. In advance of the questions that I know that are coming, I did post this painting over at Society6. So if you need to pick up a print or something, you're welcome to do that and contribute to the like $4 that they send me every month for my commission on those things. Yeah, it's not a money maker, but it's something I know that makes all of you happy to have a little piece of me in your house. If you'd like to see that promised test of Bordeaux with Quinacridone Rose versus Pearl Scarlet, then you can go click on the link here at the end of the video or in the doobly-doo, whichever works better for you. Thank you so much for joining me for this lovely little video. If you enjoyed it, click the like button, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought, and I will see you again very soon. Go out and make something beautiful in the meantime. Don't forget to create every day.